reports over the last few days suggest West Ham United could be set to sign Dan Axel Zagadou, a left-sided centre-back who's just left Dortmund in the summer after his contract came to an end. Or should I say he left Dortmund. He got released by Dortmund. Dortmund chose not to offer him a new contract. So currently, he is a free agent. So can West Ham sign him? Technically, yes. I know what you're thinking. I'm on Gio. The transfer window only shot a couple of weeks ago. Give it a break. But just like Wolves with Diego Costa this week, could West Ham sign Zagadou? Yes, there's nothing stopping them signing Zagadou. But there's plenty of things stopping them signing Zagadou, isn't there? And that's what we're going to discuss in this video. We're going to discuss the player, the situation, whether it's likely to happen or not. You can probably guess what my answer is going to be. No, I don't believe it. Now, when this rumour cropped up a few days ago now, I dismissed it. I thought, oh, rubbish. We're not going to sign anybody, free agent or not. We've got our squad now. That is our squad. We're good to go. That's what we're going with this season. But the rumours have stuck around and they've sort of evolved and they're getting reported by more and more journalists, including the likes of Fabrice Hopkins, who's usually quite a reliable journalist over on the French side of football things. And he's reporting that West Ham are set to offer Zagadou a four-year deal. I mean, I think that's when I stopped believing it. Really, That was a, a reminder. Because like I said, when I first heard, I dismissed it. And then I almost convinced myself, actually, there could be something in this. Maybe we are looking at him. I'll give you my reasons why. And then when I saw the four-year deal thing, I thought, right, okay, well, that's just not happening. Is it? That's the proof I needed, that there's nothing to this. Because if we were to sign him, and it's a big if, it would be a one-year deal, surely, for the reasons I'm going to give. But let's talk about Zagadou, the player himself, before we talk about the situation. Just 23 years of age, he's been at Dortmund his whole career. Came through the PSG system, went over to Dortmund for his first team football, and he got his first team football there as well. Represented France at every group stage bar the senior squad. So under 21s and down, he's played for France at some point um, in his career. Now... In terms of ability, I think he's a fantastic centre-back. I really, really do. Tall, physical, strong, reads the game very well. On the ball, I think he's brilliant. I think he's a really good ball-playing centre-back. Left-footed, can play left-back as well. It's ticking a lot of the boxes. Ability-wise, there's absolutely no doubt he's good enough for West Ham United. 23 years of age as well. There's a lot to like about it. But there's one... And I mean, literally, there is one thing... To not like about him, the situation, the transfer rumour, and that's his injury record. If he did not have his injury record, he'd be a £20 million centre-back easily. And I think he's probably worth a gamble for a club. And I don't think we are that club. It's a club that is in desperate need of a centre-back, a club that doesn't have money to burn. We are, I don't think we're neither of those at the minute. Um, I think we've also got plenty of cash, we've seen that in the summer. In terms of numbers of centre-back, I think we're doing okay. Now, I almost convinced myself there's an argument that we could do with one more. I'll get on to that. But then, for the reasons of bringing in the centre-back, is also the reason not to bring in Zagadou. But out there, there's a club out there that should gamble on Zagadou. And if they get it right and they're able to keep him injury-free, they've got a fantastic asset on their hands for nothing. Free transfer, £20 million easily. Like I said, ability-wise, he is fantastic. Really strong in the tackle. Not rash. Reads the game very well. Really tall, physical, strong. Loads to like. Except that injury record. And it is a horrendous injury record. He's, ju he's only just turned 23, by the way, in the summer. He's missed about 100 games for Dortmund. That's the reason he's no longer at Dortmund. If he didn't have that injury record, he would never have got to this contract situation. He would have had it tied up 12 months ago. But he does. And his big injuries as well. His knees have caused him big problems over his career so far. And he's only 23. Now, while I say he's 23 in a good positive spin, which is, well, hey, you know, you've got 10 years of centre-back here. That's also a bad thing. He's only 23 and he's suffered all these horrific injuries. Now, can you blame Dortmund for that? Are they part of the reason? We've seen injury prone players at that club before as well. So there might be an element that it's down to Dortmund there. But that's for the eventual club that do take him to work out and try and fix him up and keep him injury free. It might happen, it might not. It's just not going to happen at West Ham, is it? But like I said, he's missed about 100 games. He's only 23, he's missed about 100 games already. He'd get into the team, he would get game time under his belt, he'd get in, be in form, he'd be first name on the team sheet, injury. A lengthy injury as well. Put him out, for, and then when he gets back, you've got to drip feed him into the team, get him up to speed, and when you do that, he's back in the team, he's looking good, injury. And you, you have to feel sorry for him because, like I said, he's got all the talent in the world and he's a fantastic player. 
but pff, he's just broken. He's worse than Jack Wilshire, probably. That's how bad it is. Now, in regards to the situation, why would West Ham be after him? Well, we were linked back to him in January. So, assuming those rumours are true, we've obviously done a little bit of scouting. We have a look at him. Because in January, I think we could have done with a centre-back. When Zuma was out injured, Obana was out for the season. We didn't know what was going on with Diop. He was sort of in and out of the team. He wasn't really trusted by David Boys. Dawson was playing through the, the pain barrier um, a lot. So, we could have done with the centre-back in January. Actually, I think Zagadou would have been quite a, a clever signing if they were willing to loan him to us, knowing that his contract was going to expire. Obviously not. We didn't get him. But if we were looking at him, um, then it would make sense. I think he was li linked to Manchester City two, three seasons ago. So does that tie in with Rob Newman at Manchester City? I mean, dates, it does. But it doesn't necessarily mean it was true. But certainly Manchester City were rumoured to be looking at him a few seasons ago when he was sort of, you know, 19, 20 years old and hot property in Dortmund before his injuries kept occurring. It was a couple of seasons ago he had a really bad injury spell. He had a big knee injury, he came back and then went out with another knee injury as well and he pretty much missed the whole season. I think he played about 10 games, I say 10 games, 10 appearances. They weren't even all starts. He was out for pretty much the whole season. So before that, Man City could easily have been scouting him with Rob Newman at the club, hence the awareness. But I think this is why we're being linked to him. I think, what, as an agent of Zagadou, what do you need to do right now? You need to drum up interest in your player. It's the middle of September and he's got no club. That's bad. You need him at a club somewhere ASAP. You don't want to be a free agent at this point in the football calendar. So what better way than to link him to a high-profile Premier League club that you know is going to get a lot of coverage in the media. And... Uh, a Premier League club that possibly could do with a centre-back. I'll get on to that in a second. And a Premier League club that's been linked to him previously as well. It ticks all the boxes for an agent's rumour. That is the perfect club, West Ham. West Ham are the perfect club to link him to, to try and drum up interest elsewhere. He's also been linked to the likes of Roma. Mourinho's a big fan of him. Um, Leon as well. So there's big clubs, and he will go to a big club. Someone will take a gamble. I just don't think it'll be West Ham United. Now, before I get on to the reasons as to why I started to believe this, this video is sponsored by the One Football app, and this is where I read about the Zagadou thing last night as well. But you want to keep up to date with all your latest West Ham news, the One Football app is the one for you. And just like Zagadou, it's completely free. Unlike Zagadou, though, you can download it by clicking on the link in the description of this video. Once you download it, it'll ask for your favourite team, your favourite competitions. Then every time you go back into your One Football app, it'll only give you the news for what you've selected. It gets rid of all the bits you want and gives you all the pieces that you do desire, including Zachary News. Also, of course, West Ham got that big game um, tomorrow night on Thursday evening. Keep up to date with all the team news after David Moyes' press conference on the app. Get downloaded today. Now, as I said, when the rumour came out, I dismissed it. And I started thinking about it. Now, we're pushing forward with this three at the back so far this season. We may change to four at the back and stick with it. I think we're going to see us switching between the two throughout the season, actually, depending on form and depending on opposition. Some games will be that hybrid of three at the back and then switching to four in attack. And in some games, it'll just be a flat four like we saw in the European game. But the more we play three at the back, there's an argument we could actually probably do with eight other centre-back because... There's obviously question marks over whether Emerson can play there long term. Same with Adam Creswell. Um, picked up an injury. It's going to happen when you, um, you're that side of 30. You take a little bit longer to recover than you did when you were 22 compared to 32. Um, looking at our current bunch of centre-backs, when they're all fit, if all our centre-backs were fit, we wouldn't need Zagadou. But they're not, are they? Um, we've got Tilo Kerr. He's 100% fit. He's... Very and raving to go. He's in fantastic form. Great signing so far. But that's about it. We've got Kurt Zuma, who's had a really good couple of games. But it's sort of masking the injuries, isn't it? You know, at the start of the season, he was looking bang, out of sorts, limping a lot. And so he's not 100% Zuma. He's been managed carefully in the European games as well, in the sense that he's not playing. So he's not 100% fit. We've got Craig Dawson, who's just back from a couple of months out. So he's going to take a few games to get up to speed. But he's back now. And we've got that situation with Craig Dawson that perhaps there's some rumours suggesting that there's a gentleman's agreement between him and the club that will let him go in January so we can get in a couple of million for him rather than him leaving for free at the end of the season. So is Zagadou coming in so that we can sell Craig Dawson? It's unlikely because 
surely that would be to cover Nath Aguirre, who is obviously out. Now, there's some promising news about Aguirre. We knew he's had his boot off. Moyes has confirmed that he's no longer got his boot on, and he's, I say, resuming light training. I imagine it's barely training. He's popping into the training ground and walking out again. I think that's as far as it is at the minute. But there's some talk that actually we could see Aguirre in action for West Ham before the World Cup, which would be massive. Now, from selfish reasons, West Ham fan only, I was hoping he'd miss the World Cup. I was hoping that he'd stick with the, the squad at the training ground during the World Cup and almost have a mini pre-season, if you like. So when we come back uh, on Boxing Day onwards, he's in the team. So to send him to the World Cup with just you know a couple of games under his belt makes me a little bit, whoa, he's not 100% fit. This is a bit risky. But as a, I guess, a supporter of Nathan Gward... I say a supporter, I'm the fan, I haven't seen him yet, but as a supporter of Nafa Gwerd, go to the World Cup, you know, it's the pinnacle of your footballing career, in my opinion, it's the best thing you can do, represent your country at the World Cup, get out there, enjoy it, do well, and I'm looking forward to watching him at the World Cup, so anyway, that's the Gwerd, anyway, that covers all the centre-back, oh, Bonner, I mean, he's back on the pitch, but I think he's a long way off being ready for the Premier League action, I think he's looking a little bit rusty so far, and it's good to see him back, Nine months out to come back from that injury. Again, you have to take his age into consideration. I think he's done tremendous to get back out onto the pitch. Um, but I think he's a few weeks off anyway. So, like I said, there is an argument. Actually, we could probably do with another centre-back. But don't Zaga do? While I talk about how Ogbonna and Dawson's going to take a little while to get up to scratch, well, Zaga is going to take ages to get up to scratch. He's been unemployed since the summer. He's going to take about a month at least before he's ready for first-team action. Before you know it... We're at the World Cup, and then when we come back from the World Cup, we've got a guard fit and ready to go, so we probably don't really need him. And like I said, the four-year deal thing, I sort of scoffed at that. I thought, well, that's just not happening, is it? If, and it's a big, big if, it's a very unlikely if, if West Ham were actually interested in him, and we offered him a contract, it's not going to be four years, is it? No club's going to offer him a four They don't need to. They're in the position of strength when it comes to negotiations with the player which is uh, you're getting a one new deal and that is it now to sort of just reaffirm how good a player Zagadou is despite all this injury problems at the start of the year 2022 rather than last season they were it sort of in negotiations or they were set to offer Zagadou a new contract at Dortmund they you know in January February time they were going to give him a new deal because he was you know he's fit again he was back in the team unfortunately he suffered an injury, and that's the story of his career, I guess. Just at those pivotal points, when things are starting to go well for him, he just gets a setback. And then when he did get that setback, that's when Dortmund said, right, that's it, contract, no, you're not getting that, tear that up, chuck it in the bin, you're you're off. Yeah, he ended up playing some games towards the end of the season for them as well. And it's one of those careers where we do it in English football, we do it as West Ham fans, where you look back at a player at the end of his career and just think, what if they just didn't have injuries? How good could they have been? Now, obviously, the biggest one for me would be Dean Ashton. How good would Ashton have been had he not suffered that injury? But you, you even look at the current squad like Lanzini. How good could he have been if he didn't suffer that injury? And I think there's an element of that with Zagadou already. And he's only 23 years of age. Like I said, when he's fully fit, when he's on form, £20 million centre-back easily. Someone is going to get a bargain. Now, just forgive me. I'm just checking all my notes here because I wrote down a few things before... Um, before I went live to make sure you know, all, my, all my thoughts I could uh, get out on video. But anyway, that's it. That is, I've covered all my notes. I've covered all my notes. And to summarise, I don't believe the rumour. I didn't believe it initially. I dismissed it. Then I almost convinced myself. And there was a lot of smoke around it. And then I've come to the end of it where I just think, nah, that's uh, not happening. XS Employee did an update yesterday as well, suggesting, that, um, what's he suggesting? He, he literally said he'd spoken to a couple of people and they don't know where the rumours come from either and they don't see it. It wasn't very um, authoritative, though, the quote that he got back, which was, I don't believe so, or something like that. I can't, I can't remember. I'm misquoting here. But it certainly wasn't 100% we're not interested in him. It was very, uh, door was open for changing of mind, should you like. But yes, yeah, so there you go. West Ham are linked to Dan Axel Zagadou of Dortmund. I don't believe it. I don't see it. Hand. We do have space, by the way. We do have one space in the squad. So we did buy him. I say buy him. We did sign him. He could be registered and he could feature for West Ham in the Premier League. Um, I just uh, I just don't see it. Um, top player, when fit, 
just never fit. He's not what we need right now. Um, I don't know. This is the what I was going to talk about. If we continue to go ahead with our back three, there is an argument that Zagadou is actually would be a really good signing for us if he didn't have the injuries and that. Because as a like a ball playing centre back, I think he's brilliant. For those that haven't seen him at Dortmund, I'm trying to think who he's like in the Premier League. I'm struggling. Probably like Mark Gay of um, Crystal Palace. He's got that physique about him, but also really, really good on the ball. Really comfortable playing out from the back, left footed as well. But we've got a Guerd that can play there. We've also got Creswell and Emerson that can fit in in a back three. But Ogbonna can play there as well. So I think we're stacked enough. It's just, at the minute, centre-back-wise, it's looking a little bit ropey for us. And the last thing we need is an even more injury-prone centre-back than the ones we've currently got on our books. So Zagadou, top player, bad situation. And I'm going to leave it there. If you enjoyed this video, please do drop a like button and subscribe if you're new. And I'm back tonight. You've got a double upload on this channel. Myself and Gonzo recorded a video about who is undroppable or is anybody undroppable under David Moyes. We started discussing it in the build-up show and it was going off at a tangent. And it's one of those things that, A, you don't want to get into a big debate on the build-up show because... It's quite structured, you know, we look at their team, our team, we do the bet giveaway, we interact with the live chat, so on and so forth, so it's quite structured. So we started debating, it's like, right, we'll just leave it and do it in a video, and, well, we were planning on doing it in the international bit because we knew we need content, so we've done it for today, so later on this evening, there will be another video on this channel, and, like I said, it's around the undroppable sort of tag, if you like. Myself and Gonzo disagree a little bit, and um, by the end of it, I started to agree with him, and he started to agree with me. It was quite quite a nice video, actually, so tune in. But if you enjoyed this one, drop a like, subscribe new, and I'll catch you tonight.